Hello, welcome to Poems to Live By. My name is Chard de Nord. I'm the former Poet Laureate of Vermont from 2015 to 2019. I'm going to read two prose poems to you today. It sounds like uh, an oxymoron or even an outright contradiction, a prose poem. But prose poems, even though they don't um, exist in lines, they contain what the great poet Russell Edson called poetry mind. They contain imaginative speech, they contain metaphor, they contain meaning and memorable language that we want to go back to again and again, because it is memorable uh, and meaningful at the same time. And uh, Walt Whitman wrote in these long sinewy lines in his poem, which is a great poem, Song of Myself, as well as other poems, uh, in what um, his uh, mentor, Ralph Waldo Emerson, called meter-making argument. In fact, when Walt Whitman self-published his book, his first copy of Song of Myself, uh, the first poem in Leaves of Grass, along with some other poems as well. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote back to Walt Whitman saying to him, I greet you at the beginning of a great career, and how right he was. At the beginning of this, of his long poem that would grow longer and longer throughout his life until he died in 1892, he was born in 1819, um, he, 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 just, he added um, one great poem af after another uh, that, um, uh, was, that began with Song of Myself and the preface to his uh, great poem in which he uh, focuses on America itself as a great poem. He reifies America in his uh, poems um, as, as, uh, as a great poem. Uh, in addition to being uh, a land of uh, democracy. And he begins uh, his preface with this wonderful prose poem. America does not repel the past or what it has produced under its forms or amid other politics or the idea of caste or the old religions, accepts the lessons with calmness, is not so impatient as has been supposed that the slough still sticks to opinions and manners and literature while the life which served its requirements has passed into the new life of the new forms perceives that the corpse is slowly born from the eating and sleeping rooms of the house, perceives that it waits a little while in the door, that it was fittest for its days, that its action has descended to the stalwart and well-shaped air who approaches and that he shall be fittest for his days. And then he goes on, that's the opening paragraph, uh, to affirm America as um, the nation uh, throughout, uh, the only nation really, he felt at the time, that um, was the greatest poem. He says this, he writes this, the Americans of all nations at any time upon the earth have probably the fullest poetical nature. The United States themselves are essentially the greatest poem. In the history of the earth, hitherto the largest and most stirring appear tame and orderly to their ampler largeness and stir. Here at last is something in the doings of man that corresponds with the broadest doings of the day and night. Here is not merely a nation, but a teeming nation of nations. Here is action, untied from strings necessarily blind to particulars and details, magnificently moving in vast masses. Here is the hospitality which forever indicates heroes. Here is the roughs and beards and space and ruggedness and nonchalance, presence of superiors, the fluency of their speech, their delight in music, the sure symptom of many tenderness, manly tenderness and native elegance of soul, their good temper and open-handedness, the terrible significance of their elections, the president's taking off his hat to them, not, to the, not they to him. These two are unrhymed poetry. It awaits the gigantic, generous treatment worthy of it. I think it's such a magnificently prophetic and timely passage to read today as our democracy is experiencing one of its greatest crises, especially that wonderful line um, where, he, um, where he writes, the president taking off his hat to them, not they to him. These 
are the unrhymed, these two are the unrhymed uh, poetry. Um, and then I would like to, um, uh, to zoom ahead to 1860, 1963, August 28th, when Martin Luther King, uh, uh, in front of the Lincoln Memorial, um, delivered his iconic speech. Um, and uh, I, I don't have time, obviously, to read the whole speech, but I thought I would read this, this section of it, um, because it really strikes a note of, on, on the uh, failed evolution of democracy and the work that he felt that the country still needed to do that redounds today, I think, uh, just as strongly as when he delivered this speech. He boomed out in front of the Lincoln Memorial. We have also come to, his hallowed, to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate value of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quick sands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all God's children. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will not be content will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. Uh, so I think you see in both of these wonderful prose poems the figurative language that also works as literal language, language that we can return to again and again for definitions of freedom and the challenge of democracy, that it's not just a, uh, it's not just a, 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 set, set, of, a set of principles that um, somehow work automatically. Um, but I think that, uh, uh, I think that, uh, that um, the speech by Martin Luther King really adds a, a, a wonderful caveat that isn't contained in uh, Whitman's beautiful opening to his preface um, that talks about the, the struggle, the struggle that's, that's ongoing, that is never finished in language that is certainly memorable. So uh, I hope that on this day, which is Martin Luther King's, on, which is Martin Luther King Day, that we will think of that speech of his as a proleptic visionary addendum to Whitman, as well as to Jefferson, as well as to Lincoln, and hear and find poetry that is not just language in a book, but directives that provide memorable, figurative, powerful speech that reminds us again and again what democracy is and the poetry that's contained within it. Thank you.